want a healthy heart. Our diets play a huge role in preventing heart disease. If you're ready to jumpstart your heart healthy diet but don't know where to start, we've got you covered. Mariah Ryle is an SDSU dietetic intern and she's here to show us how to make a heart healthy breakfast recipe that you're gonna wanna whip up at home. Welcome Mariah. Thank you. Oh, this looks so delicious and colorful. Yes, it's beautiful. But first I just wanna start off by talking about what makes this heart healthy, this recipe. Yeah, so for heart health, it's super important to focus on, you know, just getting as much produce and fruits and vegetables as you can um, just has so many good nutrients fiber things like that so it has a lot of vegetables um, but also you want to focus on um, different types of fats so the oils that we're using um, are good because they have um, not very much saturated fat which you want to watch out for for heart health um, and it also doesn't have any added salt so sodium or salt is a really big thing when it comes into heart health so yeah we're not adding any of that so and with all of these different vegetables, I mean, that's so much flavor in itself. Yeah. Some people are those people where it's like, I have to have salt and yeah, pepper add salt on before everything. you taste it. <laughs> right. Because yeah. it just that's just kind of how you've always done it to add that sure. flavor. But let's get started. And yeah. obviously we can't saute the vegetables and do all the steps, but we're going to walk through it. And mm -hmm. as we go, let's just kind of talk about the different benefits for the ingredients that we're adding in. Yeah, definitely. So the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to add your oil to your saute pan. Um, and so for this recipe, I use olive oil, which I've got here, but you could also use um, canola oil, corn oil, um, vegetable oil there. Those are all going to be oils that are lower in saturated fat, which is what you want to focus on as far as oils. Um, for heart health. So that's why we're using that. So you add like a tablespoon or so to your pan and then you're going to start with the vegetables that are going to take the longest. So I start with onion, um, saute that for a while till it kind of gets translucent or you really can start to smell it. That's when you know it's cooking. Um, and then you're going to add your carrots. Those are going to take quite a while too. And with every addition of vegetables for this recipe, I add just a tiny bit, like a teaspoon more oil just to keep it cooking right um, so you add your onions and your carrots and all the while you know keep sauteing like maybe every five minutes or so you're adding the more vegetables um, so from there I usually add the asparagus because um, that takes a little bit longer as well um, I got some snap peas some broccoli sauteing it all um, and then really as it starts to really cook down um, that's when I add the vegetables that don't take quite as long like the mushrooms the tomatoes and then finally the garlic so, so is this the size that you're adding it to, or do you cut down the, the snap peas and the broccoli to small this pieces? This is about the size. The snap peas are the only thing that I really kind of uh, change it up depending on a preference. So you can definitely do them whole, like like you see here. Um, that'll just take a little bit longer to cook down, or you can cut them, you know, chop them up a little bit smaller. Um, really, whatever you whatever you like. And I feel like we haven't made a lot of recipes on the show with mushrooms. Yeah. What are the health <laughs> benefits for adding mushrooms to your diet? Yeah, mushrooms are so good. Um, they're packed with nutrients. Um, specifically, vitamin D um, is not something that we get naturally in a ton of different foods. Um, so vitamin D is naturally in mushrooms, which is great. Um, and they just add, they add extra flavor. They add texture, which, I mean, we were just talking about some people really like the texture of mushrooms. Some people don't. Um, so if you're one of those people that isn't a fan, you can always cut them down smaller. Yeah, oh, I love mushrooms. I could just <laughs> eat them plain, or yeah. if I saute them, yeah. I could just eat an entire carton. Yeah, right just make sure when you do, if you do buy um, a carton of whole mushrooms, just make sure you rinse them off. Sometimes there's some mud. Um, oh. You don't want that. Good so, tip, good yeah. tip. We don't want mud in our egg bake. Right. All right, so after we have all of our different vegetables that we're using and like you mentioned, you could say you absolutely hate mushrooms, take them out. Sure. Say you hate asparagus, take it out. Absolutely. Do kind of what you like. But then what do we do from there? Yep, so then you're gonna add a dozen eggs. You're gonna crack them into a bowl. Um, we don't have to crack them right now, but you're just gonna crack them in and then you're gonna kind of lightly whisk them up and then you'll add about uh, half a cup to a cup of milk of your choice. So this is 2% milk. That's just what we drink at home, but you could use Whole milk, you can use skim, you can use almond milk, you know, whatever milk that you use, um, you can add in. And then you're gonna add a little bit of pepper. I just put to taste, um, I like pepper a lot, so I tend to add more like quite a bit, maybe like half a teaspoon is a lot, <laughs> but you can do a dash, whatever. Um, so yeah, you'll mix the egg mixture into here and then to your um, baking dish, you're gonna just lightly grease it and then you'll add a layer of the sauteed vegetables, not all of them, but just a layer. And then you're gonna sprinkle on a little bit of feta cheese. 
um, gives it a lot of flavor. And then the rest of the vegetables, um, and then you're going to add your egg mixture kind of on top of everything. Then you add the rest of your cheese, and you're going to pop it in the oven at 350 for about a half hour. And it's so simple to do, mm -hmm. and then you have breakfast or lunch or whatever you want to make it for however yeah. long or how many people are in your family. Yep. So we have the finished product over yeah. here. You also garnished it. Oh, yes, I garnished it with some green onion that I had in my fridge just because it adds a little... A little color, but a lot of flavor. So I'm gonna take a little bite out of it. Yeah, and just along the lines of you know low sodium. Mm. Obviously, we didn't add any salt, but it definitely has flavor. Like the feta has naturally mm. um, has some salt in it, so you're definitely still getting plenty of flavor. This puts my egg bank to shame. <laughs> this is it's so good. flavorful. Yeah. I didn't have all the extra vegetables, but oh my goodness, just the the sautéing of it, you yeah. can really taste that flavor. It's yeah. packed full. It's good. So one question I was gonna ask you is. So it takes 12 eggs, and mm -hmm. we all know that the yolk is the fatty part of the egg sure. that has the fats. Yep. Could you do 18 eggs and then do six of them with egg whites? Definitely, yeah. I mean, you can play it up however you'd like. Definitely egg whites are going to be more of the protein part of the mm -hmm. egg. Um, and so if you were looking you more towards that, that's totally fine. I will say maybe it would be the fat and the yolk is really... Good, full of nutrients. Yeah, There's right. so many it's a nutrients. Good fat. Yep, it's a good fat. So don't be afraid of the yolk, but yeah, you can change it up however you want. Um, if you did do it that way, you might want to pair it with something a little more hefty on the side just so that you yeah. are full all morning and right. you don't get hungry. Yeah, well, so. this is so good. Thank you so much for coming in and teaching us how to make your egg bake. It is good. It's really Absolutely. good, I promise. <laughs> Try this at home. So thank you. Yeah.